Welcome back to Reliving the War, the show where we go back to the Monday Night Wars and compare episodes of WCW Nitro and WWF Raw. It's the 20th of November 1995, WCW Nitro is live from Georgia while the WWF is live from Virginia, so the WWF are starting a new set of tapings here. We are also one night removed from the 1995 Survivor Series, so let's take a look at what happened at the pay-per-view. The show started off with a nice surprise, Mr. Perfect Kurt Hennig made his return, becoming a colour commentator for the WWF. The Body Donna's team featuring Tom Pritchard, Rad Radford, Skip and the 123 Kid defeated the Underdogs team of Barry Horowitz, Bob Holly, Hakushi and Marty Jannetty. We then had a women's traditional Survivor Series match that featured a ton of unknown names. Bertha Faye's heel team was able to defeat a babyface squad led by Alundra Blaze. Goldust had yet another mediocre showing when he defeated Bam Bam Bigelow, the beast from the east left the World Wrestling Federation following this match. We then have the only three matches that were actually promoted on Monday Night Raw. The first one was the Dark Side team taking on the Royals. Those who tuned in to see The Undertaker's deformed face may have felt a little cheated by the dead man's new mask, but still, I liked this new look for The Undertaker. The whole Dark Side team survived the match, a complete wipeout of the heels taking place here. The wildcard Survivor Series match where babyfaces teamed up with heels and vice versa, it was a bit of a mess. Shawn Michaels, Ahmed Johnson and Davey Boy Smith were the survivors at the end of the showdown. The match also saw teammates turning on each other as expected and to further their storyline, the 1-2-3 Kid made an appearance which led to Razor Ramon getting eliminated. The WWF wouldn't promote another wildcard Survivor Series match in the future by the way, that tells you all you need to know. The returning Shawn Michaels was super over at the Survivor Series though and immediately following the pay per view, Shawn's push to the WWF title would begin. In the main event, WWF Champion Diesel and Bret Hart had one of the best matches of 1995 in my opinion, a heated 25 minute no disqualification match where Bret Hart was able to bring the best out of Diesel. Both men were aggressive and there was no letting up at all. The match also featured one of the first televised table spots in WWF history when Bret went through the announcer's table. In the end, Bret pinned Diesel with a small package to become the new WWF Champion and after the match, an angry Big Daddy Cool hit two power bombs on the hitman, the big sore loser that he is. Hart vs Diesel is definitely worth your time, I can't recommend it enough. The rest of Survivor Series 1995 wasn't great if I'm honest. Nitro kicks off with Bobby Heenan, Eric Bischoff and Steve McMichael promoting the hell out of the Nitro main event. Evil Hulk Hogan is going to take on the man called Sting. Over on Raw we have a recap of Survivor Series, Vince lets us know that Bret Hart is the new WWF champion and the Hitman is now the leader of the new generation. The WWF also promote their main event, Owen Hart taking on Shawn Michaels. So we have two seemingly excellent main events this week on Reliving the War. Our first matches get underway, on Raw we have the 1-2-3 Kid vs Hakushi and on Nitro we have the Shark taking on Scott Norton. Let's start with Nitro, as Scott Norton makes his way to the ring, a wild shark appears, attacking Norton to the sound of booze. The match gets in the ring and Shark hits a nice belly to belly suplex, something that excites Mongo McMichael no end. Shark goes on to dominate all of this one and a half minute match with some slow offence, nothing at all remarkable here 
there, Norton magically turns things around in the closing seconds, hitting a body slam to win the match. Absolute waste of time, could have done without seeing this really, but you have to remember that John Tenta wasn't really in any condition to have long matches at the end of 1995. I suspect Raw is winning the point here, but let's see. We see clips from the Survivor Series showing us the 1-2-3 kids screwing Razor Ramon during the wildcard Survivor Series match. Razor and Kid would feud with each other during the next few weeks, but we'll get to all of that soon enough. The Hakushi vs Kid match gets underway, this is a rematch from their SummerSlam 1995 encounter, and in the opening moments, the bad guy Razor Ramon picks up the phone to call Vince McMahon, saying he's coming after the 123 Kid for robbing him at the Survivor Series. Back in the ring, Vince McMahon tells us that both the Kid and Hakushi will employ the use of martial arts during this match, and so far it's been pretty fast paced, nobody's really getting the upper hand. Just as things are heating up, sore loser Marty Jannetty tries to interfere in the match. Marty was also robbed by the kid and Psycho Sid at the Survivor Series and he wants a little revenge here. We go to commercial break and Marty Jannetty has vanished. With the Razor Ramon phone call and Marty Jannetty making an appearance, it seems that storyline development is more important than the in-ring action here. If you want to see Hakushi vs Kid, check out SummerSlam 1995. Still, this wasn't too bad. Kid gets the better of Hakushi with some high kicks. Kid hits a frog splash, but Hakushi answers with a tilt award backbreaker. Hakushi hits a nice top rope shoulder block, but when he goes to the top rope once again, the million dollar man is there to give him a little push, resulting in Kid hitting a spinning heel kick and scoring the win. The million dollar man gives Kid some cash for a job well done, and DiBiase and Kid are interviewed after the match. DiBiase says that this is the new and improved 1-2-3 Kid. Marty Jannetty appears once again which leads to Psycho Sid showing up, telling Marty that he has to go through the master and ruler of the world if he wants the 1-2-3 kid. Sid ends up powerbombing Gennady on the outside as the segment ends. An easy point for WWF Raw here. With all the respect in the world to John Tenta, Scott Norton was being held back with matches like this on Nitro. His chances of making a huge impact had already passed by. Next up we have the Slam Jam update on WWF Raw while Nitro brings us an interview with Jimmy Hart and the Taskmaster. Jimmy Hart stirs the pot a little here, sending a message to Sting for tonight's main event. Jimmy says that Hogan has went to the dark side and he's befriended Randy Savage. Jimmy reminds Sting that Hogan took Savage to the set of Baywatch while the Stinger sat at home, like if that's any big loss. Kevin Sullivan promotes the World War 3 pay per view that's happening later in the week, saying Hulk's chances of winning the 60 man battle royal are slim to none. Very basic stuff here, Bobby Heenan says on commentary that Hulk Hogan hasn't got a friend in the world and that includes Randy Savage. The Brain says when all is said and done, Savage would stab Hogan in the back in order to win the WCW championship at World War 3. Over on Raw, Doc Hendricks has been on the good old white powder, he's seriously hyped up to talk about In Your House 5. Doc reminds us that Davy Boy Smith will take on Bret Hart at In Your House, we see a pre-taped Bulldog promo where Jim Cornette unfortunately stays quiet. The slam jam is interrupted when we see Big Daddy Cool Diesel enter the building and he looks pissed off at losing the WWF Championship. Doc also tells us that Hunter Hearst Hemsley will face Henry Godwin in an Arkansas Hogpen match at In Your House and that's about it. Honestly, the slam jam update was more entertaining. Both segments were used to promote upcoming matches and Doc's eccentric mannerisms along with the Davy Boy Smith promo just made for a better segment, Raw gets another point. Time for some matches then, on the WWF side we have Skip vs Savio Vega and over on Nitro we have a big one, Eddie Guerrero vs Ric Flair. Before the Guerrero match we have Disco Inferno coming out to the entranceway, Disco dancing away as he promotes his new CD, a CD that Eric Bischoff said Disco was selling for $49 a pop in the parking lot. Eddie Guerrero makes his way to the ring, the nature boy comes out with Brian Pillman at his side and Flair is not in his wrestling gear. 
Rick explains that he's too good to wrestle someone like Eddie Guerrero, and so Brian Pullman will take his place. No complaints here, this should be good. I said on the Reliving the War podcast that Randy Savage has been the Nitro MVP, but Guerrero has taken over the Macho Man on Monday nights. Eddie has been excellent week after week on WCW Nitro. The match starts off then with Brian Pullman pretending to be a bullfighter. Eddie looks on in disgust. Eddie gets the upper hand early on, but he's shut down when Pullman Pillman hits a nice drop kick as Guerrero comes off the top rope. Pillman goes on to take control of the match. There's some stiff chops from both men, but Guerrero struggles to overcome Pillman's offense. Some good stuff here, everything is on point and everything looks good. Pillman gets Guerrero on the outside, missing a dive from the middle rope that allows Eddie to capitalize with some high risk offense of his own. This was the opening Eddie was waiting for. Guerrero goes on to attack Pillman in the ring, hitting a nice brain buster before going to the top rope. We think Eddie is going to hit the frog splash, but he's stopped by Pillman. Guerrero is able to push Pillman to the mat and we get to see that frog splash and it's a thing of beauty. 1-2-3, Eddie Guerrero wins. A nice television match here, Pillman and Guerrero proving that you don't need all the time in the world to put on a fun and exciting showdown. Over on Raw, Skip and Sonny are in the ring waiting for the arrival of Savio Vega. As Vega makes his way to the ring, Resident Evil 4 merchant Barry Dudinsky is back. I was waiting for this and needless to say, I'm super excited. Barry has some denim jackets to sell us, and he also has some ladies modelling the different denim jackets on sale. Barry has an Undertaker jacket, and his models have Diesel, Shawn Michaels, and Bret Hart jackets. The artwork on the back is kind of hit or miss. The Taker and HBK jackets look fine, but I don't know what happened here with Diesel and the Hitman. Still, I'm sure someone out there has one of these, and if you do, let me know in the comments. Bonus points if you have the Diesel or Bret Hart variant. In the ring, Skip tries to attack Savio as the bell rings, but Savio fights back, leading to Vega getting an early advantage. For some reason, I always go into Savio's matches with low expectations, but as his early bouts progressed, he always managed to put on a decent to good match. Chris Candido was great at selling any opponent's offense, and he helped make Savio look good here. What I can't compliment, however, is how Vince McMahon would aggressively try to put Savio Vega over on commentary, and it's to the point where he completely dismisses Savio's opponent, therefore hurting the opposition here in the eyes of casual fans. Fans. Still, this bout fails to get going. Big Daddy Cool Diesel makes an appearance at the two minute mark, walking down the ringside and shoving Skip to the floor. We have a no contest here, folks, and Nitro gets the point. A shame, really, Skip and Vega were just getting started. Diesel is going to cut a promo next while Nitro gives us a match, Big Bubba taking on Road Warrior Hawk. Let's flip over to Nitro and see what happened. Before the match gets underway, we see clips from last week's Nitro, Eric Bischoff reminding us here about Lex Luger's attack on the Macho Man Randy Savage. Bischoff says that Savage has suffered a severe arm injury. Our match gets underway with Road Warrior Hawk attacking Big Bubba on the outside, and as Hawk dominates the early moments of the match, something falls out of Big Bubba's pocket. An object that Bubba is quick to grab and put away, obviously trying to cover up this slight hiccup. This object wasn't supposed to be seen on TV until the end of the bout. Well, our good friend Steve Mongo McMichael makes sure to let everyone know that Big Bubba just picked something up and put it in his pocket. And this wouldn't be so bad if Mongo made the call as it happened, but instead he waits until around 20 seconds after the object is placed back in Bubba's pocket. Bischoff and Heenan pretend they didn't see anything while Mongo Mongo is completely spoiling the end of the match for the viewers at home. I mean, give Mongo credit, call it as you see it, and don't treat viewers at home like idiots, but at the same time, you could tell that Bischoff didn't want Steve to talk about it. When Hawk misses a top rope splash, Big Bubba is able to take control, and admittedly, things are pretty sloppy here. Big Bubba pulls the object out of his pocket as Mongo says, I told you so. Bubba tapes the object to his fist, but he ends up hitting himself when Jim Duggan makes an appearance, tripping up the former big boss man. Hawk gets the win, a brutal match from WCW Nitro here that had absolutely nothing good going for it. 
Over on Raw, Diesel has a microphone and Big Daddy Cool is going to address the Survivor Series. Strap yourselves in folks, this one's good. Diesel said he thought about apologising to his fans for what he did to Bret Hart after their Survivor Series main event, but when Big Daddy Cool went back to his hotel room, he managed to sleep like a baby for the first time in a year. Diesel said when he woke up in the morning and he looked at himself in the mirror, he smiled at himself for the first time in a year also. Diesel said he smiled because he saw himself no longer as a corporate puppet created by Vince McMahon, going on to say that after he won the WWF Championship a year ago, he was forced to go to Titan Towers for merchandise meetings and he was told to be more politically correct for the sake of the WWF's image. As Diesel put on his sunglasses, Big Daddy Cool said that the old Diesel is back. All he cares about is his family and his friends. Good stuff here. Diesel didn't outright turn heel here, but he was promised to look after what was important to him. He didn't have to represent the WWF anymore as champion and therefore Diesel was going to go back to his roots as an unstoppable giant. Another point for Raw, Big Bubba and Hawk didn't stand a chance here. The WWF rarely done interview spots like this where the fiction was blended with reality. A forgotten WWF Raw promo here from Big Daddy Cool Diesel that you should check out for sure. We see Diesel leaving the arena, Shawn Michaels says goodbye to his friend and it's time Time for our main events. We have two big matches featuring some big names. WWF Raw gives us Owen Hart taking on Shawn Michaels, while WCW Nitro gives us Sting vs Hulk Hogan. Let's check out Nitro first, if only these two guys knew that one day they'd be headlining the biggest grossing WCW pay per view event in history. Sting comes out wearing the red and yellow, Bobby Heenan says that this is a slap in the face to Hulk Hogan while Eric Bischoff reasons that the Stinger is trying to bring Hogan back to his senses. As Hogan's theme music plays in the arena, you can hear the audience booing. It seems like the WCW faithful wanted Sting to win this match here and honestly, you can't blame them either. While I've had some fun going back and watching some of this dark side Hulk Hogan nonsense, it was still incredibly dumb and it was still incredibly confusing. Younger fans didn't know what to think and older fans were just completely turned off by the whole thing. Randy Savage comes out first, he points to the entranceway for Hogan to make his entrance but the evil Hulk Hogan shows up from the audience, he's wearing the same mask he had on last week, and instead of attacking Sting from behind like a proper villain, Hogan taps his opponent on the shoulder to let him know he's there. Hogan should have taken his chance here because Sting beats the shit out of him when the bell rings. Hogan nearly trips up over his cowboy boots when he launches a clothesline at the Stinger in the corner, and there's no denying here that the crowd is firmly behind the man called Sting. Every time Hogan gets in some offense, there's a course of boos and a light smattering of applause. Sting hits a nice drop kick that gets the audience on their feet, the fight spills to the outside, Hogan hits a suplex, and the Hulkster takes control of the match. The commentary team don't call any of the moves we see in the ring, Bischoff, Heenan and Mongo are more concerned about the kids at home watching these two pillars of WCW go at it, and how they thought they'd never see these two men fight on Nitro, and it's the the right call too, the commentary squad do a good job of making this bout feel like a big deal as the match progresses. We get some rest holds thrown in as the match inevitably slows down. Hogan keeps asking Macho Man if Sting is a friend or if Sting is a foe, like if Macho Man would know the answer. Hogan grabs Sting out of a Stinger splash, locking in a bear hug as the Hulkster continues to control the match. Bischoff tells us that WWF Raw is currently airing commercials, so there's no point in changing the channel. Sting starts to fight back, locking in the Scorpion Deathlock only for Hogan to power out of Sting trademark submission move. Hogan begins hulking up and you know what's coming next. Hogan nails Sting with a few punches, he nails the big boot, but Hogan misses the leg drop as the audience roars in approval. Sting puts on the Scorpion Deathlock once again. Will Hogan lose clean and submit right here on Nitro? 
Of course not. The Dungeon of Doom make an appearance, the match ends in an old contest. It's a shame too. To Hulk's credit, he worked a different style here that we hadn't really seen before and the match wasn't all that bad, but the finish gave us no conclusive winner, which was really par for the course here in WCW's main event scene. Hugh Morris was now with the Dungeon of Doom by the way. Sting and Hogan clear the ring but the giant shows up. Macho hits giant with a steel chair, giant no sells it, and Savage pays for his crimes with a choke slam. Sting and Hogan end up double teaming the giant, sending him out of the ring with the steel chair, and that's pretty much it. The Taskmaster and Jimmy Hart complain at the commentary table, and the show goes off the air with Eric Bischoff promoting this Sunday's World War 3 pay per view, where we will see a new WCW champion crowned in the 60 man battle royal. Let's check out Owen Hart vs Shawn Michaels then. That Nitro main event wasn't bad, but it wasn't great either. Can the Heartbreak Kid and Owen Hart put on a better match than Sting and Hulk Hogan? Shawn Michaels comes out to a rock star like ovation. The whole Syracuse incident had gone a long way in elevating Shawn's popularity. The classic turn a negative into a positive thing had worked well and Shawn was seriously over towards the end of 1995. The match starts out with quick reversals and snoppy offense some great pure wrestling here that the WCW main event just couldn't deliver. Sean outsmarts Owen quite a few times in the early moments of the match, but Owen is able to clothesline Sean out of the ring before hitting a baseball slide that lands right on Sean's chin. Owen nails a nice bridging German suplex in the ring that nearly scores him the win, and now Owen is firmly in control. We go to commercial break, and when we return, Sean is trying to fight back, but the King of Hearts is able to keep Sean at bay with a neck breaker. The crowd rallies behind Sean Michaels as his flying forearm finds its mark. We have had a great fast paced match so far here. Sean nips up and begins attacking Owen. Another flying forearm finds its mark and Sean is able to hit his trademark elbow drop. Sean then grabs Owen's leg in the corner and Owen reverses with an enziguri. An enziguri that would help elevate Sean Michaels into the main event. Owen Owen goes for the sharpshooter, HBK fights his way out of it, and Sean knocks Owen over the top rope. When Sean gets back in the ring, he collapses. Completely out of nowhere and completely unexpected, the Heartbreak Kid falls to the ground as the audience is left wondering what on earth is going on. Owen plays it well, looking over to Vince McMahon to see what was going on and how he should continue. Jerry Lawler and Vince McMahon sound concerned on commentary and eventually the commentators go to check on Sean, leaving Raw with dead air while adding a serious tone to end this broadcast. The insecurity that Owen hit Michaels with, along with the beating Sean took a few weeks ago back in Syracuse, had seemingly made Sean collapse in the ring. The WWF wanted to make this look as real as possible trying to give the impression that this wasn't supposed to happen and in fairness this was the talk of the wrestling world immediately after Raw went off the air. Raw ends with an unconscious Shawn Michaels and the point goes to Raw. The Hogan vs Sting match was decent and as mentioned earlier credit goes to Hulk Hogan for trying something different and having a somewhat competitive TV match but Owen and Shawn were excellent in the ring and the ending of Raw is still well remembered today. This incident pushed Sean to the next level. The sympathy card would get played once again and Sean was kept out of the ring until the 1996 Royal Rumble. So Nitro lost the first point thanks to their decision to air a Scott Norton vs Shark match. The Survivor Series Slam Jam was strangely more entertaining than the Dungeon of Doom promo, so Raw is already up two points. Eddie Guerrero and Brian Pillman had an excellent TV match that was much better than the short Savio Vega vs Skip Showdown, and then Big Daddy Cool Diesel cut a great promo while WCW fumbled around with a Road Warrior Hawk vs Big Bubba match. Finally, both Raw and Nitro put on main events featuring some big stars and I personally thought the Owen Hart vs Shawn Michaels match was better. This means Raw gets another win this week and the overall scores now on Reliving the War are 4 points to Raw, 5 points to Nitro and we've had 2 ties. In the TV ratings, Nitro scored the win, bringing in a 2.5 rating while Raw pulled in a 2.3.
Next week, WCW Nitro will air their World War 3 Fallout show. We will have a new WCW champion, so it will be interesting to see what goes down. On Raw, Brother Love will interview Bret Hart and The Undertaker will also be in action. Thanks for watching Reliving the War and remember to check out the Reliving the War podcast for extra bonus episodes.